Absolutely, it was worth it. Um, I think we've seen a lot of positive changes, and I, I believe that we were able to expose so much to not only Canadians, but to the entire world about what was going on with the lockdowns and the mandates and stuff, so yeah. I mean, we were labeled many, many things. One of the things that we were labeled was anti-vaxxers, which, I mean, none of us were anti-vaxxers. We were just anti-this, whatever it was, you know. But, I mean, still, we were more freedom of choice to be able to have, it's our charter right, freedom of choice, right? Body, auto body Bodily autonomy. And so now, uh, looking back, I mean, I've started working with some vaccine-injured people and I'm um, trying to get their story out and I've got some ideas on how I'm gonna do that because that's what we were trying to prevent from happening was deaths or injuries, you know, or life altering, life changing injuries in some cases. And it's very heartbreaking to hear these stories because most of them are just like that. They're, they were coerced or they were, you know, told you have to do this or you can't see your dying father in the, in the nursing home. Or you're going to lose your job, which, you know, if people had families and stuff. So, I mean, that's the stuff that we were standing up against was, was tyrannical measures like that to try and prevent what we're seeing happening now. Yes, it was. Uh, Justice Mosley found it to be illegal and impractical and a few other things, which is good for us. That's, that's good for us. I think that's part of the reason why he invoked it. I also think he had dug his heels in so deeply and backed himself into such a corner that there was no way that he was ever going to come out and face this or have anyone come out and face this. You know, Chris Barber said to me on the way to Ottawa when all the name calling and everything started on his behalf and he went into hiding there with COVID, he said, Trudeau is just mad because we embarrassed him. And I said, no, we didn't. We've just handed him the platform and he's embarrassing himself. And that's what he did. And so I really believe that he just dug his heels in so bad and he wanted to look tough and like he was, you know, really taking a stand. I think that's why. And, and his ego, he's got a giant, giant ego. Uh, so I was in jail for 48 nights, 49 days, um, and it was unpleasant, you know, because they just don't, they don't really care about you in jail. You're just another number, you're just another person. And the one thing that I learned from jail, though, is that I've always been someone that's appreciated kindness. And when you're in a situation like that and people are kind to you, it's, it's like a bright, shining light, and it's just something that you just grab onto and, and hold onto so tight. I saw some fights in there. The conditions in Ottawa Carleton Detention Center are abhorrent. There's many, many human rights violations uh, happening in there that need to be addressed, hopefully soon. A lot of the inmates that are in there are drug addicts or psych psychiatric patients that have no business even being in there. I mean, they may have committed crimes, but they need they need help. And the guards that work in those places aren't psychiatric nurses, right? So there was a lot of hard things to do, but that's what I, 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 like I said, I was treated pretty good. I did have guards come up to me and express their gratitude and, uh, you know, thank you for what you did. Thank you for keeping my family free and, and stuff like that. Well, first of all, I cannot take credit um, for everything that happened. I mean, that was that was a Canada-wide, in my opinion, effort. And myself and the truckers, I think, were, you know, a catalyst in getting it started. But if it wouldn't have been for Canadians that supported us, participated, donated, showed up to help, you know, it would have been a completely different story. When, when this started, literally in my mind, you know, I thought maybe, maybe they'll raise 20 grand, hopefully, and Chris and a few others can drive across Canada and get out in front of Parliament and with their sign and then get back in their truck and come home, you know what I mean? Um, never in a million years did I expect it to end up on the scale that it ended up on, but I'm proud of what we did. I'm proud of all the truckers that were there. I'm proud of the Canadians that were there. I mean, if you were there, I mean, it was just the most loving Canadian atmosphere. And there's two words that we heard the most when we came across Canada and in Ottawa. And the first one was hope. And the second one was pride, and people were just so proud to be a Canadian again, and it was just so beautiful. Uh, GoFundMe ended up returning all of it, uh, refunding it, of course, you know the story about that, so I don't need to go into that. Um, Give, Send, Go refunded almost all of their donations, except for uh, over three million that was just coming down through the uh, Stripe payment processor. and. Of course, GoFundMe had originally released that million, so that they seized that also. 
And that is sitting in an escrow account somewhere here in Ontario, probably here in Toronto actually, um, seized by the Ontario government. Um, well, I was in jail, <laughs> so I was lucky, I guess. I was getting free meals. My husband, unfortunately, was uh, in Ottawa without a bank card, vehicle. You know, thank God for friends and uh, that we'd met that really helped to take care of him. We were on our way back to Alberta when they fro unfroze our account because my husband would just go in and try and buy an energy drink or something every day and just to see if it would work. And we were on our way home by the time that happened. So, I mean. We're, we are all flagged now. Um, I don't know if I'll ever get a mortgage again. I don't know if I'll ever get a loan again. I have been, obviously, um, I still have my accounts with TD, but I don't use them. I'm just keeping them there for now because there could be some action coming, I'm hoping, against them. Um, I went to the ATB to try and open a bank account and they called me two days before my appointment and canceled it. Um, they were denying me services. The fact that Christian Freeland did it so gleefully and happily, uh, I mean, I've got her notes, right? Her notes uh, label them as terrorists and seize their assets. That is what she thinks of the middle class people of this country for standing up for their rights. Label them as terrorists and seize their assets. So it's very unsettling and I think not only did that uh, wake up a lot of Canadians when they took that measure, because banana republics don't even do that, it woke up the world in uh, not a good way for, for Mr. Trudeau. Well, I think it's, uh, there's already so many positive things about it. And I remember when we were still driving across Canada and Chris Barber was talking, you know, they were, they were always talking on the radios to each other and some people would, you know, express concern or worry. And, um, and I remember him saying to all the guys on the radio, he's like, we've already won guys. And, and we had already won because we'd woken up so many people. The support we saw along the roads and in the overpasses and, uh, you know, people donating. Like, like we raised over $100,000 in less than 24 hours. I think it was over 125000 actually in 24 hours. So I think there's a lot of positive things that have happened. And I think it, it's still very positive. Um, it, the, the politicians are trying to politicize it, which is unfortunate. But, I mean, that's the way that they roll. So... I feel very positive about the outcome. My focus right now is helping other people that have legal fees to pay. Uh, we've been doing a lot of fundraisers. We're coming back to Ontario in a, in a few weeks to do some more fundraisers for Dan Hartman, uh, for Jay Vanderweer, who was just found guilty on two counts of mischief. Um, I've been out to help Chaba VZ and Harold Jonker raise money. So, I mean, that's kind of my focus because we always said no one gets left behind. And that's very important to me that everyone's looked after. Um, the vaccine injured too is something that's very close to my heart and I want to make sure that these people get the attention and the care that they deserve so which I think is is positive I, I feel very blessed you know I I never saw this coming but I've been gifted a platform where I think I can use my voice to advocate for good things like that I've always been someone that uh, pulls for the underdog and I've never been able to abide a bully <laughs>